Okay, this is um, a project where I um, added a, a feature onto my workbench where I can use the lower part that I normally use for storage uh, as a wood kiln to dry wood. Um, let me show you a little closer up what the deal is with it. I've got it set up right now as uh, the first part of, uh, of two parts to dry the wood. Uh, what's in there right now is uh, Western Red Cedar that I uh, chainsaw milled recently, about a week ago. And I've got it stacked in here. You can see right here, I've got uh, just some one inch strips of uh, some scrap cedar uh, stickers, as they call them. Create some air gap in between the different uh, planks or slabs of wood. Uh, which is essential for it to dry. In this first step, what I'm going to do is uh, heat the wood up to about 130 degrees Fahrenheit for several hours, maybe about half a day, so that uh, you know, so that everything in the wood, is, even the inside, is heated up to that temperature. Uh, the idea there is to sterilize the wood, get rid of any bugs, uh, any of the eggs, kill off any mold, mildew, anything like that. Uh, what I what I have, um, you can kind of see here. Let me zoom in right here. What I have on the out on the outside, and I, I installed a few of these panels, but I've, I've got right here is uh, some uh, panel insulation. And I've got the, it's got a reflective side. I put that side inward so, you know, it's going to reflect more heat, keep more heat inside. I've also got them on the, uh, on the top, uh, in between the joists on the top side of the workbench. Now, I didn't put them on the bottom side of the workbench. Um, this is my second time going through drying some of the wood. And uh, it, it seemed to be okay without them on the bottom. So I, I, I just didn't uh, take the time and the money yet to, uh, to install those on the bottom. I think it would uh, hold the heat better, but with the, with the setup I have here, I, I am able to get up over 130 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, I, may, I may add it later, but it's really not essential. Uh, maybe go over to the side here and show the... Uh, to set up what I got in there a little from a different view and that's it right there so what I've got is uh, several lights now there's uh, a couple of halogen lights that I use in my my, my garage uh, like right here this is a uh, this is a 500 watt dual halogen uh, lamp and then right there is a 150 watt heat heat light or heat lamp, and this right here is a box fan, just a uh, inexpensive fan that I have in the house. Uh, it creates uh, the idea there is create some airflow across the wood, try and create some turbulence inside there so that everything inside is about the same temperature. And I've got a couple other uh, lamps right here. Uh, there's another halogen lamp. I think it's 250 watts, and then that's uh, a 250 watt heat lamp. So you know, close to about a thousand watts of uh, light. And uh, this this is another view of the panel insulation right here. Got uh, it's just styrofoam insulation. It, uh, I forget what rating it is. Let's see if it says over here on this side. It's about an inch and a half thick. I think it's somewhere around five, R5. Let me zoom out here and show what uh, the deal is with that. I just cut them to fit, and they just fit right in these, these little openings right here. I did add these little uh, these corner braces parts right here 
to the workbench. That's really the only thing that I added to the workbench. So it, it's uh, kind of a neat little add-on feature to the workbench. And when I'm done doing the wood kiln drying process, I can move back my uh, my tools and other stuff underneath this area and store. Go back to how I've normally been doing it and storing stuff. These little cross braces is just a one and a half inch by one and a half inch um, piece of fur, and then a plywood strip that's screwed down to the to the uh, a little fur piece, and then another screw to the uh, the workbench. So just allows you a, a way to support these and protect those panels. I cut the panels to be pretty close in size, so they they fit in there without any sort of uh, little strips of wood to, to to secure them. Maybe down the road if I do this quite a bit I might you know kind of picture frame the, the panels and uh, allow them to be more easily installed and removed but uh, I, I don't really plan on doing this kiln dry stuff a whole lot uh, so I'm just going to leave them as is. They fit tight enough uh, and so yeah I don't really plan to add anything more uh, down here, where you know where the the cable, the power cords come through, I'll just notch out a little corner of uh, one of the panel panels uh, to allow those guys to come through. And then I've got uh, this temperature sensor right here. It's uh, got a remote uh, sensor right here that will stick inside there probably put it in a place that uh, is far away from the heat so I can get an idea as to kind of what the worst case or the coolest temperature is in there and that'll give me uh, the indication you know when when I'm up over the 130 Fahrenheit number and then I could start my you know start the clock for running it for several several hours at that temperature now I myself I don't really feel comfortable leaving this alone. Uh, so this is just this is really just the first part of it, and uh, it should take less than a day to do this. So I'm, I'm it's not like I'm going to be having these these lights inside here, you know, when I'm away. 